Hi, everybody. Happy New Year to you. It is Wes with Pikes Peak Trades, and I'm very excited to be talking about the year 2021 coming up. I think we're in for a very exciting year. I want to take you through the monthly charts um, on many things, um, indices, ETFs, individual names. I want to talk about where I think we're going in 2021 and even looking out as far about as I'm willing to project maybe 2023, 24 and show you the stock market, show you metals and miners. Um, and I, we're going to see um, just what happens, especially in um, the short term. I'll talk about my projections for the month of January getting started right away and also looking out into what I think is going to happen through maybe the second quarter, the first half of 2021, and then what I think is going to happen uh, in the second half of 2021. So let's look together here at the SPX monthly chart, and we're going to see very, very healthy monthly charts. So looking here, uh, we want to look at some technical indicators. We've got a stochastic that just crossed for the month of December. We've got a MACD pointing strongly up. Uh, we do not have a monthly divergence. Uh, well, let, let, me, let me clarify that. We do not have monthly divergence within the year 2020. Now, we do have some monthly divergence um, against this high, but that was in the middle of what I think was a cycle two correction. So let me clarify that. That is monthly divergence against the very end of December and the end of January 2020. But when you're looking through a cycle degree correction, you typically disregard that divergence. So this RSI was completely reset on what I'm counting here as the cycle too low uh, that was basically the COVID crash. So the divergence that's more important for us to be looking at is with, within the span of the current wave progression that we're in. And we can see that December closed with a higher RSI. So I am projecting bullish things for the first half of 2021. And you can see that I've got my target up here. I think we can see the SPX at about 4,600, maybe even higher into the second quarter of 2021. But after that, I'm projecting that the second half of 2021, we're going to see a very frustrating downward sideways grind. That's probably going to take us through almost all of 2021, let's say from maybe May, June through December. But then I, I think we see a very bullish 2022 followed at that point by a pretty painful correction. And that's about as willing as far as I'm willing to project out right now. Let me get you into the NASDAQ index. So you're, you're going to see uh, the divergence that we need to be aware of on the NASDAQ is from the end of August high. So that is the divergence. I'm looking down here on the RSI. That is the divergence that I think is going to usher in a primary degree correction that I just talked about. So I, I do see here the NASDAQ showing that divergence, and that's, I think, going to usher in the primary degree correction in the second half of 2021. But I think we have some pretty explosive upside potential in the first half of 2021. Let me get you into IWM. So our small cap ETF here, a very, very healthy monthly chart. We're, we're not seeing that kind of divergence, but I, I think we, we will start seeing it internally, probably on the daily and the weekly, and you can see my projections here. It's very important that we see healthy charts in small caps and then here in financials because we need broad market participation. So again, we can disregard the potential divergence across this cycle correction. What I'm interested in showing you here on this is XLF is we just got, we got a monthly MACD cross. And that I think is extremely important looking ahead, the stochastics of cross, the, we've got an RSI pointing up for a very bullish first half 
of 2021. And then you can see it's not going to be in a straight line. So here's my projected correction for the second half, a strong move up through 2022. Uh, but in the long term, I am bullish. So now um, we get into some, uh, this is my favorite sector and positioning for 2021. It is metals and miners. And we're going to see here on GLD, I have GLD positioned in a wave five. So this is an intermediate five to finish primary three. Commodities love extended powerful fifth waves. I think we're about ready to get it. You're going to notice on the monthly GLD chart, not quite a stochastic cross. We have an RSI pointing upward and a MACD starting to hook back up. I think this is going to, going to be a powerful move. And I, again, have that corresponding to end of the second quarter of 2021, a frustrating sideways grind downwards. Um, and then culminating through 2022 into a pretty important cycle degree top. Let me show you SLV. I'm even more bullish on SLV. We have here on the monthly bar a stochastic cross. RSI pointing up, MACD pointing up, no divergence. I am very, very optimistic for silver and silver miners in 2021. I'll show you some individual monthly charts here in a bit. Okay, so as you've seen, as I've shown you just in this first part of the video, S&P 500, NASDAQ, IWM XLF ETFs, GLD SLV ETFs, what I'm projecting for the year. Explosive moves up through quarter two 2021, a frustrating downward sideways grind for the end of the year. Let's see if that plays out. Okay, now let me get you into here. I want to move into some individual names with monthly charts to show you that they're also healthy. But I also want to point out, like I did on the NASDAQ, we've got some developing divergence on the monthly. So Apple's monthly chart, it looks good. But as Apple moves up to, to make what I think is going to be probably not mind-boggling, but just a very exciting set of all-time highs in the first half of 2021, I think we're going to see that monthly divergence that's going to lead to um, its correction. It's going to correspond to that NASDAQ uh, correction, which, which I think is a primary degree. Here I have Apple here um, in an intermediate degree. Actually, that should be updated. That should also be a primary degree, I think, to match this cycle high. So I want to show you Tesla. So Tesla, I think, will culminate again in a 2021 significant high. It's this kind of monthly divergence that we're going to be on the lookout for. Uh, but again, in the near term, I am not bearish on Tesla. Amazon. So everyone's been frustrating by, by, frustrated by Amazon, but look, its monthly chart is healthy. We've got all of its monthly moving averages in bull position. Uh, we've got a higher low established for the month of December. Didn't quite get that higher high, but I think it's coming soon. I think we see Amazon uh, above 4,000 by the second quarter of 2021. But then again, you're going to see this monthly divergence is what is going to usher in, I think, a pretty painful correction in the second half. Last monthly big tech chart is Microsoft. I've got Microsoft further in its, in its progression. Uh, I think we could actually see here uh, in Microsoft, now I don't have the, the internal degrees here labeled, but we're looking, I think, at a super cycle high um, some point probably within the year 2022. Um, and, and again, I've, I've boxed it in red, the potential divergence. But let me be clear, I'm very bullish on Stocks and metals for the first half of 2021. Okay, now let me uh, take you in here to um, the individual silver miner monthly charts that I love. And I've been talking about how I think this move is dependent on the U.S. dollar. I want to point out something interesting here. This is uh, the dollar daily chart. The bears are probably pretty excited over this move that, that happened on New Year's Eve. It is not actually a bullish engulfing candle. If you look at the daily high from December 30th, 89.987, it is 
978. Actually, I said that wrong. 89.979 versus 89.978. It is to the thousandth of a penny short of a bullish engulfing candle. Now, that's getting down into the minutia, but what I think we saw is we just saw a dollar, uh, just a dollar bounce, a temporary bounce on New Year's Eve. My projection is for a continued slide in the U.S. dollar that's going to correspond through, I think, the first quarter. Now, I'm, I'm not going to really talk about what might happen after that, so speculation, but I do see dollar weakness corresponding to stocks and metals going up in the first quarter. So dollar weakness is going to fuel these individual names. Here's First Majestic, a very, very healthy looking monthly chart. RSI straight up, we got a MACD cross. I'm extremely bullish into the first half of 2021 on these names. Cordeline, you're gonna see it, similar. Very, very strong month, up 46%. And I think it could potentially double into the first half of 2021. Hecla, another major name in, in our mining sector. Take a look. I, I've got it circled here. We have the MACD cross, the RSI pointing up. I pointed out earlier this week that when that happens in these other areas, there's typically a, a short-term correction that follows. When I get you into some daily charts, you're going to see what I think that is going to transpire, I think, in January. But again, I am very bullish on these names in the first half of 2021. Okay, so now let me drill down here into some daily charts. I want to show you what I think is the significant GLD breakout of this month's long bull flag. I think we got it. And if I show you on the short term, I think we just put in the back test. So I am very optimistic for this first week of January that we get an explosive move starting right away on January 4th and 5th. And as I'm drilling down to the smaller time frames here, I want to make sure that I show you that potential here in GLD. So now let me see if I can get you there on some other daily charts. So let me now get you into our S&P. This is a bullish outside day. So it set on New Year's Eve, a lower low versus December 30th, um, and then finished with an all-time high. When you're making all-time highs, it is not bearish. And I also want to point out with an RSI uh, about a 72, it's a little bit overbought, but there's room to run. So I still think we're going to see early on, I think we get a pop into the 3800s for the very first couple days here in January 2021 coming up. I want to show you that. A weekly view of QQQ, very, very healthy. No weekly divergence of recent divergence, but I think as I pointed out, we will start seeing that divergence come into play. Here it is on the RSI 9 as we start to approach uh, more significant topping levels through the first and second quarter of 2021. On the daily, I've talked about how pullbacks to the eight-day EMA are healthy. And I hope you, take, you took advantage of it. I think it was a buying opportunity again on Friday to try to catch a very quick move up into early January. But I, I, now, now here is a little bit of caution. And I think you'll see it here on the daily that I think we do actually get a sharp pullback within the first or second week of January. And that's because we, we do have some pretty frothy sentiment um, and there is the developing divergence here already present on the daily charts. So be ready for that. So my play for the first full week of January is expecting a bullish blast off at the start of the week. I'm going to be quick to take profits into that strength. And I, I'm going to be ready to anticipate a short-term correction. Now, it could be sharp. It could be scary. But it's going to be healthy. 
So then after that early to mid-January correction, I think we see the kickoff moves that then will power us through the rest of the first half of 2021. Okay, now some individual names. The individual names that I'll show on the dailies um, are names that I didn't recently tweet about um, uh, right at the end of trading on New Year's Eve. So Google, I, I think we see Google uh, ready for, I think we got a one up, two down. I think it's, it's, it's moving in a healthy way in its progression of a minor five wave. I don't have it here on the daily, but that would culminate with, I think, a very significant top in Google um, into, into quarter one, quarter two. Netflix, very, very healthy looking chart. Um, I unfortunately got stopped out here on Netflix and did not get back in. My concentration was else, elsewhere. I certainly wish I had. Uh, it is certainly a, right in the middle of a wave three nested progression. I could see Amazon um, at some point, maybe after a, a short-term pullback in early January, if I scoot this out a little bit, could see Amazon challenging $600, uh, certainly into February and March. Okay, let me run through um, the other things that I'm still uh, very bullish about before I show you what an unhealthy chart looks like. Short-term work. So here I think S&P, we get that quick burst early January, and then probably a pullback. Now, I'm, I'm not exactly sure at what degree it's going to happen, but I'm showing you early, early bullishness the first full week of January, and then I think we get a pullback. You can see that here on QQQ. So I really like a bullish target to open the first full week of 2021 in the 318 to 321 area. Some pullbacks. This one here of probably a minute degree is probably the one that could be uh, quick and scary. So again, my play is to sell into strength on strong moves, progressions within these names that I'll show you in a bit, um, the first full week of January. So you're, you're going to see as I progress through here, buying opportunities at the end of the last week of 2020 on all these names. Apple. I think we saw uh, a, just a gap fill holding at support of a wave four degree. I think we can see Apple above 140 early on in 2021. Amazon. I think we also saw Amazon at, at a wave four pullback. It held my 15 minute 200 period MA. That's my short term swing trading, trend following, moving average. I think we could see Amazon very bullishly up into the 3400s early in that first full week of January. Facebook. Looking at Facebook, I think this, this was a, a second mouse gets the cheese type move on Facebook. I think we saw that degree two pullback. I loved the bursting close at the end to get it above that 200 period MA. I am very optimistic that Facebook bursts out of, of its lethargic sideways movement and gets through this 280 degree area uh, within this, this first coming week of January. Okay, I've already shown you Google on the daily, but on the short term, you can see again, there's that wave two dip, an opportunity to buy. How about Microsoft? The theme here is pretty consistent. Here's a wave four pullback. Now I don't have that updated price. It was just below 20, uh, 220. I think we see Microsoft strongly up um, into all-time highs very soon. And Tesla, I think an opportunity again to add on Tesla, which I did. So I, I added nearly every single one of these names that I've shown either December 30th or 31st looking for that, that short-term burst uh, that my charting is projecting um, to start 2021 with, I think, some bullish fireworks. Now, that's the bullish stuff. I want to show you what do bearish charts look like. Well, on the daily, the moving averages are exactly the inverse of what you just saw on the bullish dailies. Here's BABA. BABA has yet to reclaim its falling eight-day EMA. So I took a chance here on BABA, and I did short 
on, on this negative move on New Year's Eve. Now, it's possible that, that I got, I'm going to get myself trapped and we see it move up to challenge its 200-day SMA. Very possible. But I think this gap right here is going to get filled and, and that is now actually my short-term projection on BABA. Okay, now from, from a stop-loss perspective, what it, it's an easy risk-reward trade. The, the stop-loss here, anything above this previous high is going to get me out because then I think it could actually move up to challenge here. This is a little too high. I haven't updated that. The 250 level. Okay, but it, it, it is, let me make it clear, this is not a healthy-looking chart. Some other charts, that everything you're going to see um, on these tabs are, are not healthy. We've got beyond, clearly beneath its 8 and 21 day EMAs, but it might have found support here at its 50 day. So it is possible that beyond put in a deep minor 2 correction and it's about ready to start moving bullishly. But again, I do not buy stocks in downtrends. I do not try to bottom pick these names. If I'm going to get back in, we've got to see a move up to a higher high, a move down to a higher low, and so far we do not see that pattern. Okay, Salesforce. So Salesforce, it is possible again that we've seen some bottoming action. This is a, a little bit healthier because it's 8 EMA is, is still above, it's 21 EMA, but I point this out to you because this is the, the development of your eye for what is starting to look like an unhealthy chart. We, we don't want to see the price under the 8 and 21 EMAs, and we don't want to see them trending down. I, I think Salesforce needs a, a really quick move up in the first week of January. By the way, uh, I have no position in this name. Okay, Pinterest. I've been sounding the alarm on Pinterest Ever since uh, what we got was here, I think it's obviously confirmed now a gravestone doji candle. And, and this developing rounded topping divergence that, that I, I talked about, I hope that if you were a Pinterest holder, uh, that you thought about locking in profits early before Christmas. That would have been the time to lock in profits um, on that divergent top. And we can see that that 8 EMA is starting to bear cross it's 21. So I am I am not bullish on Pinterest. I, I think the possibility, the probability favors a move down to these blue or red targets. Uh, I think just greater than the probability that we see one more cycle top. But of course, uh, we need to watch it. Again, no position. Very, very interested in watching uh, what, what is the development of what could be a bearish chart. Okay, Roku, now, now still healthy here on the weekly, but this type of candle is a warning candle. So there was a shot fired here on Roku. It's not a bearish engulfing, but anytime you see this type of red weekly bar, it's going to get your attention. I think it's possible we see some weakness in Roku early in January and showing you here on the daily that this is what is starting to look like a bearish trend. When we see the breakthrough, the ADMA, and we see failed attempts to re-grab it, if Roku cannot reclaim it early in January, this is a short candidate. So all of these stocks that I'm showing you here, except for probably Walmart, are, are short candidates. I want that list lined up if we're starting to look for the possibility eventually of some topping moves in 2021. Okay, Walmart would not put Walmart on the short list, but again, I just want to show you it, it, it hasn't resolved itself yet fully bullishly, but the, the probabilities say that a minor degree low is in, and I do want to point out with Walmart on this tab, you probably got the second mouse grabbing the cheese opportunity on New Year's Eve. I know that many eyes are on it, probably had some aggressive takers trade advantage, I personally don't think the bang for the buck is there for me to get involved. My money went into the big tech names to try to get their burst, but I do think Walmart is a pretty compelling opportunity here. Um, we're gonna, we'll finish with Zoom, and that'll complete our stocks A to Z. So Zoom continuing to make lower highs, lower lows. 
You don't want to buy a stock in this type of downtrend. Zoom has to break that pattern. I think we see Zoom early in 2021 fill this gap at 325. I think we'll see a minor four bounce and we'll see a divergent low here. We have not seen that yet on the RSI 9 to usher in what, what is now obviously a primary two correction. Um, if you were to go all the way back through my Twitter profile, all the way back towards the development of this top, I sounded the alarm on Zoom. These kinds of divergent developments, maybe a little more visually true on pins, is what we need to be looking for later in 2021 across the indices and ETFs as our warning that it's going to be time to get out. And so that is overall my philosophy uh, that I want to leave you with. Um, I'll just bring it back here as I wrap up to show you, uh, again, the visual that I think the first half of 2021, we do get an exciting move, a quick burst in January, probably a sharp, fluff-removing, uh, euphoria-tempering correction early to mid-Jan. Then I think a powerful move through the first half of 2021. I'm not bullish the second half. So my plan is to take uh, profits into strength as that develops through, let's say, April, May, June of 2021, and then probably rest through the summer. Get outside, spend some time with friends and family. You don't want to trade wave fours, which is what I think we have coming up in the second half of the year. So super fun for me to take you through this ride on projecting out into the start of the year. As always, it it's my best probability suggestion on what I think is going to happen. We project, we monitor, we adjust. Let's see what we get right away in our first full week of January 2021. As always, excited to be on this journey with you, um, and I wish you all the best. I, I think we can expect at least a better start to the year in 2021, um, and then we'll see where it goes from there. So I wish you all a wonderful New Year's weekend, and I'll catch you later for the first full week of trading in January.